we can make some considerations on holonomies and loops starting from uh, the Palatini action that I have uh, rewritten here. You can also see that I have uh, written down the variables which are present in the Palatini formalism. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to make some considerations in particular when you have an action, you can uh, take the variation of the action with respect to the variables and you derive some uh, equations of motion and uh, some constraints. In particular, what I want to consider now is the variation of the action with respect to uh, this parameter here and tilde. Now, if we take the variation with respect to that parameter, we obtain the following equation, the trace of e tilde alpha, e tilde beta, f alpha beta equal to zero. Now, at this point, when we go to the quantum theory, the variable e tilde alpha of x, if you want, will become quantized and it will become, of course, since this is a conjugate variable, it is conjugate to omega here. It will become something like minus i, and then we have a derivative, which is a, a functional derivative. I'm going to use a, the following notation, d over d omega alpha of x. So this equation will become... We replace this with the operators and we get something like this. I'm going to write f alpha beta first and then I have the functional derivative with respect to omega alpha of x. Then I have a functional derivative with respect to omega beta of x. And then of course I need to put here some uh, wave function, some, some wave function that I will call psi of omega equal to zero. This is an important equation which goes by the name of uh, Wheeler-DeWitt equation. It is another way of writing the well-known Wheeler-DeWitt equation where you we have some operator here in front of uh, the wave function, which is uh, a constraint, let's call it h, and then th this acts on uh, the wave function psi equal to zero. It is similar to a Schrodinger equation where we don't have a, very, um, let's say, a time derivative here on the right. So this is uh, the Wheeler-DeWitt equation. And now I want to give you some hints as to why the holonomies solve this kind of uh, functional equation. In particular, let's consider the following function, psi of omega equal to the trace. So we are going to consider the trace of a holonomy. In particular, the holonomy can be written as a path um, ordered uh, exponential, so we have a path ordering of the exponential integral, we have also i here, then we integrate over ds, gamma dot a of s, omega a, omega a of gamma of s, and now if we consider the derivative, the functional derivative of this expression with respect to omega beta, of x of psi of omega, this is equal to, we get something like this. We have a, we still have the trace, then we have path ordering, and then we have an integral over ds prime gamma dot beta of s prime. We also have a, a three-dimensional Dirac delta gamma of s prime minus x because here in the functional derivative we have x. Then we have e to the i integral ds gamma dot a of s omega a of gamma of s. Now this is a very complicated expression, but what I wanted to show you is that uh, this functional derivative here is proportional to gamma dot beta, as you can see here. So the, um, the idea that you can get from this is that if you take another functional derivative with respect to omega alpha of x, then you have functional derivative with respect to omega beta of x of psi of omega. This will be proportional to gamma dot beta of s prime, gamma dot alpha, and then here we'll have something like s double prime, and you also have an integral over s double prime there. But 
Remember that there are some Dirac deltas here, which tell you that we have also another equality, which should be satisfied, which is uh, gamma of S prime equal to gamma of S double prime equal to X. So we have these velocities here, and we have also these equalities. In particular, if the loop does not have any intersections, then it means that the velocity vector gamma dot A of S is unique, right? And if this is unique, well, you can, you can see from uh, here that when I multiply by F alpha beta and I sum, I sum over alpha and over beta, since F alpha beta is anti-symmetric, then when we sum uh, this multiplied by F alpha beta, F alpha beta here as well, then this will give us zero. If, let me repeat that, if there are no intersections, because otherwise, if there are uh, some intersections, then it is possible that um, gamma dot A of S has more than one value, right? Because if, if uh, we have a curve, we consider a curve when we have an, an intersection, at this point, if we think that we are moving like this, so we are moving basically like this, it means that here at this point, we have two possible velocities, if you think about it. And this breaks the symmetry there, and therefore you cannot really say, you cannot conclude that this is zero. So this is just the idea. And if this is zero, it means that this expression here, so basically this is related to um, the trace of a holonomy, this would solve the wheeler dewitt equation, which is related to general relativity, as you can see, because we started from the Palatini formalism here. And this is just some insights. It is not formal, and one could make more technical considerations. But I think that this is something interesting that gives you the insights about why we get uh, loops and why we have to consider loops when we go from uh, general relativity to a quantum theory which considers general relativity.